Hello, hopefully today I'm going to show you how to turn your Onion IoT board or device into something which can show you the temperature or you can then use to log the temperature or display it on a website or on the on the built-in display if you've got the display expansion for it. So a couple of weeks ago for an entire 99 pence on eBay I bought a temperature board which is labelled for Arduino but it um, it's basically just a one wire sensor temperature board thing. It's labelled LC Tech on it and has three pins, one for volts, one for I guess DQ, data, uh, and then one for ground. Um, you can, or quite a lot of the time, you see uh, instructions or tutorials with just this temperature sensing component and then you're supposed to use a breadboard or solder on resistors. The nice thing about this thing that came from eBay is it had all that just on one simple chip. It's very convenient. The other thing I ordered was some uh, pins basically because I thought if I needed to connect two things together these are sturdy, convenient rather than just a, a wire which isn't very sturdy. And also, really usefully, a mass a kind of ribbon cable but with them um, little pokey bits on the end, connectors, I'm sure there's a proper word for those, but um, those would very conveniently, or do very conveniently, well that end goes on to there, and the other one uh, will conveniently poke onto the Omega Onion. So if I can get my recording set up properly I shall see if I can show you these those devices that on um, eBay Uh, which uh, it won't let me show you on um, OBS, so I'll just have to point the camera at the screen, but there you go, 99 pence temperature sensor for Arduino there's the ribbon cable 99 pence again, and I'm sure the other one again wouldn't have strayed far. Yep, 99 pence again. So that's fairly decent. So, what did I do? Well, I'm definitely going to have to uh, get the screen recording going for this, but we'll see. So, initially, we've got the onion and the temperature sensor. So, I'm going to get three of the wires which I've peeled off of those connectors that I bought. I'm going to attach in no particular colour order. Uh, the black is going to go on the ground. The white is going to go on to the data and the grey and white or the grey is going to go on to the volts or VCC or, or voltage plus I presume. Then on the onion itself. So remind myself of the colours. Black is ground, so black goes into the GND port. VCC is grey, so that I have been told works on other voltages, but um, I'm going to. It might work on 2.5 volts or 3 volts, but I've been using it on the 5 volts. So there we go. And immediately it has a little light on it now. So definitely plugged the voltage in correctly. And I'm going to use GPIO port 19. <coughs> pardon me, 19 on the um, onion. I did initially plug it into GPIO 0, and didn't seem to get anything on that. So I'll have to um, to go through and see what happens or, or why. Um, or which ports you can use or which ones you can't, but for the moment I'm going to use the one which I know works, which is port 19. Um, now, we can put that down and see whether I can get my putty session onto the screen. So hopefully it'll work. Position and uh, edit. There we go, that seems to likely work the way I want it to. So I have logged in to my factory reset onion 
and the things you need to do to get it going. It already should have the uh, one wire modules which is the ability to talk over that single wire um, to the temperature sensor. Those should already be there. I believe if you go LS mod, um, there we go, we've got one wire GPIO and one wire therm, well, it's, it's actually loaded the correct modules itself, uh, which is weird because I don't think I've done anything. The only thing I expect if I go to the folder that's supposed to contain the details, which is slash sys slash devices, yeah, we don't have the one wire folder there. So um, what I need to do is edit a file, which is in slash etc slash modules dot d slash 55 dash w1 dash gpio dash custom and you want to put in the line w1 hyphen gpio hyphen custom space bus zero equals zero comma now I'm afraid I don't know what all these mean except for this number 19 which is the port which we plugged the temperature sensor into. As I say I tried that with zero earlier because I wanted to use GPIO port zero and it didn't work but um, for the moment as I say I'll just use 19. So I'm going to save that and I believe there might be a command that you can use to reinitialize the GPIO but I'm just going to reboot the onion Should have dropped the connection by now. While it's rebooting, I'll see if I can get both the webcam and um, putty onto the screen. Ah, oh, right. Hooray for free software. OBS is an amazing bit of software. Right, so I've now been disconnected from that session. Restart the session. So hopefully now, in that folder that I went to earlier, which is slash sys slash devices slash w1, well, there we go, it has created the w1 bus master folder, so w1, and the top of that folder, I've only got one sensor plugged in, but that's my sensor there. Um, if you had two sensors plugged in, you would see another sensor there. Uh, but there's only one plugged in here, so CD to that folder. Um, let's also move that. Uh, good a place as any. Um, in here, there's a lot of other things. I actually haven't looked at what's in these files, but uh, let's have a go. So, some random ID that I can't read. A name, which is just that name. And the one that we do want is the W1 slave file. And there we go, immediately it's come back with the uh, temperature, which uh, it seems depending on the possibly the chip you have or, or something, some of them come back saying with a decimal point, so 20.62, whereas my one comes back with 2062, which is uh, 20 degrees 0.625, I presume. Um, you could either just read that on demand or have a PHP file or a Python file, CGI file, that would just retrieve that data for you from that file. Um, the other thing you could do, if we do opkg update to update the package manager, opkg install proc ps-watch, which installs the watch command, which is very convenient. So you can go watch minus n1, which is for every one second, cat, and then that slave file. And then every second you'll see it'll update in the top right. The time, that's every second, it's reading that file. So now if I, uh, if you look at the webcam, if I get this temperature sensor and then I breathe onto it,
it's gone up to 25 degrees. 24, going back down again. Um, that's not particularly useful to me because you don't see a history of, of the temperature. So what I have had was a script point it to bash or sh while sleep one every one second do cat slash sys slash devices slash w one underscore bus underscore master one slash twenty eight dash I didn't actually notice whether the uh, ID had changed I'm just going to copy and paste it and hope that it's the same w one underscore slave ampersand ampersand date done Hopefully, there we go. Every second it scrolls past the date and time and the current temperature. Uh, because it seems to take um, like half a second to read the temperature, I have it doing the date after. So you, you get the temperature and then immediately after you get the date. If I did it with the date first and then retrieving the temperature, you'd get the date and then a, a weird gap and then the temperature would appear. Um, it just, just looked a bit visually jarring because it would be clink 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 whereas this is just one uh, everything shifts up at once but again now if I get so you can see it's 20 degrees uh, let's try something more interesting let's put it in front of my fan heater in the office put that on to full blast go so immediately 25 degrees 30 degrees 35 degrees <laughs> so 40 degrees and turn that onto lower mode but there we go that's quite cool so that will hopefully help me answer the question of what temperature some of our rooms are in the house um, and be able to just look at a glance you know a couple of times a week rather than have to walk into the house uh, and and look at a, a physical thermometer because who does that these days what kind of savage world do we live in where you have to do that when you can have a computer do it for you anyway hope that's helped uh, it's a really good start to using the one wire sensor. So I've never used this one wire stuff before. Um, you can get all sorts of sensors for it. I presume you can probably find a lot of uses. Uh, and as uh, my wife pointed out, it's quite cool because there's lots of GPIO ports and you can actually have loads of sensors. So you could have one onion uh, monitoring multiple rooms and or multiple temperature sensors. So if you had a fridge and a freezer that you wanted to monitor the, the temperature of two different points of it, um, that would be fairly easy. Or if you ran a long lead from one onion to all the different rooms in your house, you could have it monitoring the, the temperature in every single room just from one onion device. Pretty cool. Uh, obviously, doing this exact same thing would be really easy with um, an Arduino or uh, um, a Raspberry Pi as well. It's not just limited to, to the Omega onion, but... Uh, I'm quite taken with the the form factor of the omegas and um, and the ease of ease of use really, but I hope this has inspired you to do something.